Hey everyone, so music has been a big part of my life since as long as I can remember, and recently I've been doing videos on music, whether it be just my album reviews right now, and I thought I'd get a little more personal and talk about artists I've been listening to recently, and we'll just go with like as of right now, so we'll go with like the top five of them, but I have a couple honorable mentions that will go down here of Kendrick Lamar, the Beatles and Led Zeppelin, Kendrick Lamar. I I've listened to him on and off, and recently I've just gone through like a lot of his discography. I heard the new snippet from that one, that new like new track that might be coming out soon, which I think is gonna be amazing. But you know, Kendrick Lamar just listened to him a lot. The Beatles, I feel like everyone's listened to the Beatles, but I've just been going on like kind of like a binge recently, which has been crazy from uh was Abbey Road, to the White Album, to Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, to Revolver. I actually recently got uh, the Revolver album on vinyl, and that's been pretty awesome. Uh, and Led Zeppelin, just, I don't think you can go wrong with them. Uh, been really listening to uh, Physical Graffiti. That's been one that I didn't actually listen to at, like, at all besides the song Cashmere, but there's there's a lot of golden gems on there. There's just a lot of those uh, songs on there that I think are good to listen to. And uh, Led Zeppelin 3, listen to that one. That one's underrated. At number five, we have uh, a tribe called Quest. I've ever, I feel like a lot of people know this band. If you're any big fan of like this 90s rap era, they have considered one of the best rap albums of all time in the low end theory, which is st still, in my opinion, gets underrated at how good it is at blending jazz, these clever wordplay, and back and forth, the flow in it, uh, just the chemistry between uh, Q-Tip and Fife Dog, which, rest in peace, Fife Dog, uh, but that's just not something I see as much in, like, rap groups modernly, and I do listen to a lot of modern rap of this, like, kind of chemistry and this back and forth almost conversations in it, on that album and all of their discography in general, just from like Midnight Marauders to uh, People's Instinct of uh, that album, their debut one, which they made when they were still teenagers at that point, which is crazy to me. And it's still a good album. It's been outdone by other ones, in my opinion, like obviously a low end theory, Midnight Marauders, but it, it's not like it's a nine day, like the first one was bad or anything like these, these guys are amazing. And then they brought in uh, Mr. Muhammad or Muhammad, sorry uh as their new producer after the first album or he might have been on there because i know they had uh another guy on it for the debut album that left but his produ his production skills on it are amazing throughout the albums the band has just been really good check the rhyme amazing song the horn sections on it are good uh there's just so many good like themes on it their last album that they ever made uh i think did really good at just uh bringing the old with the new together, kind of putting this bridge and basically passing the torch on, which I thought was so cool to do. Uh, they This band's been influential and in even giving like careers to like Busta Rhymes, which I, I think is crazy and like always cool to see that they're doing that. And I think they have sta stand the test of time and they've just been a fun to be listening to. And on to the next one we have Pink Floyd. We, they don't need any introduction. Uh, one of the most iconic uh bands of all time with one of the most i can't iconic like album cover too in fact with uh dark side of the moon and the wall I feel like everyone has at least seen the dark side of the moon album cover the wall one as well but you know i've like i've listened to this band for a long time in that and you know they just always i just always enjoyed them and i've kind of gone and been listening to a lot of some of their like early albums like adam hart mother uh and metal and I'm not here to, like, tell you, like, oh, these albums are better, and that means I'm, like, a super fan or anything, because, no, that's not what I'm trying to say. I'm just saying, like, uh, I'm just trying to, like, broaden what I can, like, listen to in that, and I can just say it here. They're not bad albums. I definitely don't think that they're better than, like, The Wall, Dark Side of the Moon, Animals. I think Metal is actually from that, like, early on before they kind of hit their stride, uh, like, with their commercial, like, with the commercial stride with, like, Dark Side of the Moon, Metal was definitely their peak one, in my opinion, uh, because, like, Umaguma was horrible, I do not care what you say, if anybody here tries to say, that, like, Umaguma, like, I just can't look at you the same, uh, but, like, Adam Hartmother isn't bad, it's just kind of felt, at certain points, like, 
they all were trying to like play their own kind of thing and then trying to put it together and it just didn't work well together. Uh, but the band just iconic, revolutionary, what anything I can say has been said and will be said again, but it's been enjoyable to listen to it again. Uh, I, I've been listening to obviously the two albums I just said, but, uh, the wall, I was re-listening to it cause after, I'm going to be honest, that's my favorite Pink Floyd album. Some people say that's basic. I, I don't care. It's a really good album and was my real like introduction into listening to them and liking them. And it's just been good. It's been a good experience so far. Uh, highly recommend it. Uh, for song-wise, what I've been listening to, uh, just all like the Another Brick in the Wall, like part one, two, three, the t- greatest moment of our lives, like in between it. It just transitions so well into each other of that and is like the crux of the story. Comfortably Numb has been good to listen to. Uh, Young Lust, uh, Run For Your Life, Mother from that album it's all been like good the entirety of animals is also so still underrated and it's amazing of that it's not a super long album not a lot of songs on it really good uh just just very good wish you were here that's another album that's been really good uh i also just got that one on vinyl uh super stoked that i have that now uh highly recommend just a lot of those albums i've named but yeah, no, that's Pink Floyd. That's number four. And on to the next one, we have Talking Heads. Just They've become one of my favorite bands recently. I've, I've known who they are and I've listened to them decently, but that was only like the surface level of like their most famous songs like uh, Psycho Killer, Take Me to the River, uh, Burning Down the House. Speaking of that, if you haven't heard that Paramore cover of it, it's amazing. Uh, but yeah, it's really just been those songs alone, uh, that I knew, and I knew that they were, like, influential, like, everyone sang that, and I was, like, for the longest time, I was, like, okay, but, like, how influential can they be, and then it was during work, it was gonna be a long day, and I was, like, I've been trying to listen to, like, new albums, just as, like, kind of to broaden my horizon, and I knew that, uh, Talking Heads Remain in Light is like their mo is their highly uh regarded album like their highest regarded album up there with like speaking in tongues i know those are the two but uh i liked the album cover and i was like okay we'll give that uh we'll give that a listen and the moment i hit play like from the start to the end i enjoyed every single song on there and one of my now favorite songs is born under punches the heat goes on which is such a good song, and when you kind of, like, just dissect what it's saying in, like, the very, uh, dark, uh, emotional state that it sounds like this, like, person that they're singing about is going through, it makes it almost darker than their song Psycho Killer, which you wouldn't think would be possible, but from their, uh, Time of Our Lives, such a funky song, uh, Seen and Not Seen, uh, Talking Wind, Talking Wind is rarely mentioned on that album, but it is, it is great. It is such a different uh shift in the album of these like slower tempos rather, but keeps that same talking heads like Afro centric beats, uh, and blue centric. These like kind of it's just so new, different, and everything that people say about Talking Heads is so right. Uh, the performances that they give on these are amazing, and I've I've enjoyed listening to them and have continued to, and I keep finding new stuff with a bunch of their other albums on there, and it's just been fun. And at number two, we have Tyler the Creator. Now, I I need Tyler the Creator to release a new album soon because I'm getting on like a dry streak where I'm just waiting for new stuff because. I've it's been uh call me if you get lost it's been Igor it's been Flower Boy it's been Wolf I've been re-listening to Goblin uh not really haven't haven't really listened to Bastard just because anything on Bastard really just gets outdone on Goblin and I'm not the biggest fan of Goblin outside of two songs on there which is uh She and uh, Yonkers but uh I've just been I've just been on like a kick of Tyler the Creator lately and I can't tell you why. Uh, but, you know, I wasn't, like, that big of a Tyler person, uh, back in the day of, like, middle school's kind of when, like, it came to my attention who he was, 
And it was because of Eminem name dropping him. And then I looked up who Tyler was and then listened to Goblin for some reason. I don't know why Goblin was the one I chose to listen to. And uh, I was like, whoa, what am I listening to? Because of how like disturbing and dark it was. And it was funny. But at the time, it just was not for me. And I don't know why that wasn't for me, because I was big on Eminem back then. I mean, like, his, like, early stuff, like, his very uh, made-to-like-piss-people-off type of albums. And that's, like, what Goblin was. So I don't know why I didn't like it at the time, but uh, I didn't I didn't like... Uh, I wasn't a big fan of that. And back then, if I didn't like one song by them, then I just would not listen to the rest of it, which was, you know, dumb. But also Middle Schooler... And then I listened to Cherry Bomb because that came out, and I didn't like Cherry Bomb, uh, like, at all. Like, that's still, to my day, my least favorite Tyler Crater album. That's why I didn't name drop it. Uh, so even then, I wasn't going to listen to it. And then it was, I, and I also, that made me skip Flower Boy, and I love Flower Boy now. And then it was in 2019, I saw that Tyler Crater's Igor beat DJ Khaled for the number one spot. And this wasn't because I disliked DJ Khaled or anything at the time. It was simply just because it was being talked about so much. And I was like, wait, Tyler the Creator beat DJ Khaled? So I listened to Igor and was like, whoa, this is crazy. And to my freshman brain of, you know, I'm an emotional mess right now with the heartbreak, all of that stuff. It, it just spoke to me. And then I listened to Flower Boy. That was amazing. And then, uh, you know, a couple of years later, uh, Call Me If You Get Lost comes out. And I loved that album. The estate sale made it even better uh and i've just been i've loved tyler since then i love his personality uh just i because i also just didn't pay attention to him outside of his music so i didn't really get to uh see his personality outside of it and like from appearances on like the eric andre show his interviews it's just so funny it's made me love tyler but there's one band and like just one artist that i uh can't stop listening to and this has been like this for the longest time and that would be our number one spot, Soundgarden. I have loved Soundgarden since I was in middle school, and my love for them has grown even more. Uh, at the time of recording this, it is, I believe, the 30th anniversary of Super Unknown, which I love that album. My personal favorite Soundgarden album is uh, Bad Motorfinger. I own it on vinyl. Loved it. Really got into it in high school when I was slowly starting to get into some more like heavier sounds. And just really liked it, but I've liked so much of their discography down from their uh, debut, Ultra Mega OK, to their next album, uh, Louder Than Love. Have that one on vinyl, really good one. I think that one's underrated with that like raw grunge sound and does it super well. Then they had uh, Bad Motor Finger, which explored these heavier sounds, uh, more like am, uh, ambiguous songwriting and this was when they brought in their new bassist uh ben shepherd and it just worked so well then they had a uh, super unknown then it was down the upside and then that's when the band broke up and they came back with king animal and i wasn't really that big a fan of king animal like even as the biggest Soundgarden glazer you will ever meet uh, I'm not gonna glaze king animal i don't think it's a horrible album or anything i just think it lacked a lot of the characteristics that uh made me love Soundgarden and while yeah no it's not a bad album I just don't think it's good it's just kind of it's it's just kind of mid honestly but Chris Cornell I think is one of for male vocalists uh in rock because I don't really want to go in all genres because then it's like criteria is different of that that's why I'm not a big fan of those like greatest uh vo singers of all time because one you gotta like then put it into standards like well what does each because different genres classify it differently but i think he's one of the best male like vocalists in rock music or just one of the best rock vocalists uh from his ability to transition so smoothly from this like warm baritone voice to these like higher pitched uh but still smooth to like this raw energy he exhibited in his like early career uh it's just it's amazing of that and his ability for it to just flow so perfectly of like the rhythm section of the band of like from him because he he plays he played the rhythm guitar uh to uh matt cameron as the drummer ben shepherd as the bassist and even their former bassist i think it was hiro yamamoto was his name who was for the first two albums 
just very impressive what these guys were able to do in it uh one of the best like grunge bands if not in my opinion i think they're the best grunge band in terms of like music they made obviously you can never beat the cultural impact of nirvana no matter what you say no matter how much somebody might say they're overrated i don't think they're overrated because of what they were able to do uh but i'm it's still just it's so crazy of that and they definitely deserve the praise they're given but i think should be given more uh but it's just insane just from like songs that they've made from like black hole sun as like their most well that song just got added to fortnite i just remembered that to on the same album fourth of july spoon man on bad motor finger jesus christ pose slaves and bulldozers outshine rusty cage rusty cage got covered by johnny cash uh louder than love hands all over loud love uh underrated one that i never hear mentioned uh power trip go listen to that that opening like layered vocal thing they did is so alarming and haunting uh down the upside uh i don't there's a song pretty and then it says a word on there that i can't i can't say i don't want to say on youtube just in case uh uh blow up the outside world uh i'm just trying to think there's just so many songs in there that i can name here but that's my number one uh band and like artists i'm listening to but that's been that year's running. That was my 2023 Artist of the Year. I was in the top 0.5% of listeners, uh, which was crazy and a huge fan of this band. But yeah, that's that's going to be the video, honestly. Uh, I had a lot of fun making this video. I enjoy kind of just talking about it. Uh, and I hope to do more in the future. But that's going to be all it from me. I uh, hope you enjoyed. Tell me what tell me what your guys' top five artists are. I'm always curious of that. Just like feel free to share of that. I I'm not here to I'm not here to judge that. Just kind of I'm just kind of curious. And hey, maybe I might hear something that I have to add to my like uh, need to listen to list. Uh, but that's gonna be it. Bye.